I'm Zhang Shiqiu, the professor of uh, environmental economics and policy at the College of Environmental Sciences and Engineering at Peking University. We are living in a dynamic world, facing a lot of challenges, including the climate change, environmental degradation, resources depletion, loss of, of biodiversity, and etc., which impose heavy risks on human health and the sustainability of the world. There are interlinkages among all those issues, not only in physical terms, but also in social and economic terms. It is highly needed to address those local, regional, and global problems under the overall framework of sustainability by greening the economy, low carbon practice, restructuring energy, and innovation. To respond to those challenges, we need to know whether the current levels of social and economic activities exceed the current capacity of boundaries of the planet, in which way, and what are the impacts and effects, and who are affected, what are the implications on human and ecological health, and the sustainability of the world, and how does and what should the economic and the political system and the society respond to those risks. We also need to know, can our economic and political institutions respond to the uncertainties and the risks in reasonable ways? And can the nations, economies, and the world, including the economic and the political system, work together to address those challenges? In order to better study and provide educational resources to students, who is willing to take leading role for providing integrated solution to the environment, climate challenges, and reducing the health risks. London School of Economics, LIC, and Peking University, PKU, cooperate in the delivery of LIC PKU double masters in environmental policy, technology, and health. This is a two-year program aimed at the award of both the Master of Science in Environmental Management of Peking University and the Master of Science of LSE in Environmental Policy and Regulation or Environmental and Development or Environmental Economics and Climate Change. This program aims to make full use of the research and teaching resources of both universities to provide a high level of international and interdisciplinary education and training and to promote the academic exchange. The students will spend first year at Peking University and second year at LSE. Peking University provides eight courses, covers both the fundamentals and frontiers on environment and health, energy resources and climate, environmental governance and policies, integrated assessment of environment, economy, energy, climate. And we hope to help the students to develop their leadership potentials, either academically or practically, for promoting and providing the solutions supported by deep understanding of the sciences, complexities and interlinkages among various environmental problems. We welcome students from all countries to apply and we hope to work with you together to explore the very challenging and exciting new journey. My name is Gong Jicheng from the Department of Environmental Health. Uh, I believe we all want to be healthy and we are living in the dynamic world. There's a lot of things could affect our health, including the air we breathe, the water we drink, and the food we eat, etc. In order to keep healthy of the population and our human bodies, we need to keep our environment clean. But currently, we are facing some problems of environmental pollution. We need to control them in uh, acceptable levels, but there's many problems that we don't know. There's uh, too many pollutants in our environment. We don't know which one is more critical in causing our human health. It is very important for us to know that information before we start to control. And another issue is how these pollutants affect our human health. 
through which pathway we could use biomarkers to indicate human health condition. And we have many cutting edge instruments in our department. We can use them to analyze the small molecules from the environment samples and from the human bodies. We also need to construct the causal relationship between the environment and the human health, but there's uh, many problems we don't know yet. So in order to solve those problems, in our department, we have developed a whole chain study principle, which means we studied the relationship between environment pollution exposure and human health from the sources to the components to the health effect and to the policy. We use this way to systemically investigate the relationship between the environment and the human health. Hello everyone, with rapid development of economic and society, a large number of pollutants are digested into water, destroy the ecosystem and affect the human health. Laboratory of environmental engineering mainly focus on how to effectively remove the pollutants with low energy consumption and low cost. About more than 100 years ago, activity sludge process was invited to degrade pollutants into harmless substance by functional bacteria. Activity sludge process is the most commonly used technology for wastewater treatment. Among here, activity sludge is composed of many functional microorganisms. It can be used to remove chemical oxygen demand, COD, nitrogen, phosphorus, and many other pollutants. As carbon neutrality has attracted extensive attention across the world, it is particularly critical to develop high efficiency energy saving and low consumption with water treatment technologies. Our team has long been devoted to the ecological research of animals' bacteria and the practical application of animals' technology for the actual with water treatment. Let's take a look. The red bacteria is the animals' bacteria. It is very magical because it can directly convert ammonia and nitrogen to nitrogen gas. Let's look at the traditional nitrification and denitrification process. It means the ammonia converted to nitrate under aerobation condition and then to nitrate. And the nitrate finally transformed to nitrogen gas using carbon salts. And the animal's process can directly convert the ammonia and the nitrate to nitrogen gas. Thus, it can uh, save more than 16% air fission, and uh, it also can save 100% carbon salts. Uh, this is the typical wastewater treatment reactor. Uh, and this equipment contains a lot of functional bacteria. This is the influence of this reactor. And uh, here is the wastewater. So it can uh, flow into this reactor, and this is the end of this reactor. So many pollutants are degraded here uh, by the functional bacteria. For example, in the influent, the ammonia concentration will be 100 mg per liter. But after the treatment, the end of the ammonia concentration can uh, decrease to about 2 to 5 mg gram per liter. So more than 19% of the ammonia uh, will be removed to nitrogen gas in this reactor. Uh, we develop a lot of methods to uh, increase the removal efficiency and the bacterial activities. Certainly, we still have a long way to go and we look forward to you joining us. All pollutants are usually at very low concentrations, and many of them are highly reactive in the atmosphere. Therefore, collecting them and bringing them back to the laboratory for analysis is insufficient for studying air pollution. At Peking University, we have developed advanced mobile laboratory and movable integrated super sites to allow um, embed measurements in locations that cannot support full laboratory facilities. Here are the movable uh, integrated super sites. This 
container is, is equipped with electricity, AC, and other laboratory facilities. We are now able to deploy many of the state-of-art instruments in these containers. Here is the PKU mobile lab. Instruments are installed inside the vehicle and uh, powered by a battery system. The mobile lab gets the real-time measurements of air pollutants while driving. When the vehicle runs in the city, we get the special information of air pollutants that serves as a very important supplement to the superset observations. We are standing here at the Peking University Urban Atmosphere Environmental Monitoring Station. It's a roof station that consists of three sites. We are now in the central part. This station represents urban atmosphere, a typical urban environment influenced by various anthropogenic emissions. Online instruments are operated for years to measure the air quality in Beijing. During the recent years, we often suffer from haze episodes with extremely high PM2.5 concentrations. With advanced mass spectrometers and laser-induced spectroscopic methods, we can now get real-time chemical and physical information about PM2.5 and their secondary precursors at the molecular level. We have conducted several intensive field campaigns here in the past five years, with the participation of international collaborators from Europe and North America. The purpose of these campaigns is to look at the sources and the formation mechanism of air pollution, as well as the health impact of air pollutants. The scientific results may eventually turn into advice for policy decision on pollution mitigation. Hello, I'm Xiao Wang. I'm a Chinese student from the dual master's degree, uh, jointly developed by Peking University and uh, London School of Economics and Political Science. Uh, yeah, and I used to study in Beijing Normal University in the Environment School, and my major is Environmental Science, and the concise field is uh, Environmental Planning and Management. So, how about yours? So um, my name is Varun, um, I'm from India and the UK. So I actually studied um, economics and uh, sustainable development at the University of St. Andrews. So that's up north of the UK in Scotland, it's very cold. Um, and now I've somehow made my way to, to China to study the same double degree as, uh, as all of us. Um, my name's Nick, uh, I'm uh, half Japanese, uh, half Belgian. Uh, I studied economics in the uh, Erasmus Universiteit Rot in Rotterdam, the Netherlands, um, and I majored in financial economics. Uh, and yeah, I'm also part of the LSCPKU double master's course. Yeah, so how you found this program? I just uh, received the recommendation from one of my professors in uh, the Beijing Normal University. So how you find this program? So for me, it was quite unexpected almost. I was always going to apply for the um, economics and climate change masters at the LSE because I was doing my undergrad in the UK. Um, I was looking for master's degrees also in the UK. And I came across the, the one-year masters at LSE. And then by, by through that masters, I found the same master's degree can be done as a double degree with BEDA, with PKU. Yeah. And for me, it was almost like a no-brainer because I get to study for one more year and I also get to spend a year in China and study climate change um, and environmental pollution topics from the context of China. Mm -hmm. So that was a very important thing for me and to also experience a new culture and experience a new country. So then instead of just doing one more year in the UK after doing four years, I could spend one year in China. <laughs> so that was very exciting. Yeah, Getting get yourself out of the rat race. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> very <laughs> exciting for me, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, well, um, I had a gap year in between my undergrad and this master's, and I did an internship in Geneva in financial sustainability. Mm -hmm. uh, so I asked the company I was working at, um, where do you get your fresh graduates from? Like what courses yeah. do they pick from? Mm -hmm. So they gave me like a, a very long list essentially, and uh, the LSE PKU course was one of them. So I decided why not, and uh, I got it. Yes, since we have already spent more than two months in Peking University, mm. uh, how do you think about uh, study and living in the university? Mm. Well, I, yeah, I can go first. Like, it's really cheap. Like, it's <laughs> super, super student budget friendly. 
And, and the fact that there's uh, so many canteens all over campus, you, you just never get tired. You know, there's so many, there's like Sichuan food yeah. it, from different Chinese provinces as well. <laughs> so, like, and, and, and the campus is so beautiful. Yeah, it like is. It's, it's just very it's nice. It's very beautiful. I mm. mean, I've never been to China before. This is my first first time in China. Yeah. And I know my experience is more restricted to like the Haidian district or like the, B the Beida campus. Mm. But just studying here feels you almost feel inspired to study when you see the, um, the mix of these modern buildings with the mm. um, Chinese architecture. It feels mm. good to study here. Especially the north part of campus. Like when, yeah. you know, just, just recently in like the last month and a half when all the trees turned yellow. Yeah, it's it was amazing. very photogenic, you know. You don't, you don't really get that I in other campuses yeah. because it's just not as big or like it's more like, you know, urbanized. So and it, it feels good to have like a campus feel as well because mm. at least in Europe and the UK, um, a lot of the universities, there's no campus. Everything mm. is, all the academic buildings are all scattered around the city or the town. Mm. I'm sure we're it, It's very busy, you know, there's a lot of yeah. cars, a lot of traffic, a lot of noise, but here it's really like super you, you peaceful. You have a very like campus vibe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you feel very homely, very mm. secure. And mm. I quite like that having come from mm. four it's, years of It's that. also really big as well. So like you get a lot of steps in, it's good for your health. You yes, know? <laughs> I think it's just like a little society and you can get everything in this little compass. Mm. Yeah, it's more convenient for you to study here. Mm. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah, you know, like in the first like month, of being in this campus, like you, you start like, oh, we've got like a supermarket over here now <laughs> that's completely <laughs> hidden and underground. Or, yeah, there's an entirely different like canteen that you haven't been to. So yeah. it's like, it's like a, how do you say, like a, a, a treasure hunt. Yeah, mini ecosystem. I mean, I wanted to get my bike tire repaired um, mm. last week and there was literally a whole <laughs> shop on campus, university affiliated, just to get your tires changed and just small things. This is very convenient as a, as a student, I think. Yes, yes. So what do you think about the courses? We take it? I think we have a lot of courses. Yeah. Um, the year in PKU is more focused on the scientific um, issues of, of, of environmental pollution and climate change. So yes. it's a little bit less of a social science kind of thing that you would expect at maybe LSE. But mm. I think it's quite good to get a more scientific foundation of the environmental issues we would learn next year at the LSE. Mm. Um, yeah, I yeah, know, um, you know, the same as me, my undergrad was in economic. Uh, economics yeah. and econometrics. <coughs> so, you know, despite the fact that I'm more of a economics oriented individual, like some of the courses this semester particularly have been really enjoyable. Like, you know, the, um, uh, the renewable energy and sustainable development yeah. course by Professor Cheng, that's really interesting. Maybe it's because it has something to do with my internship with, you know, transitional material security, but I yeah. really like the interactive environment they have. I love, you know, doing presentations yeah. and having discussions. And, and every professor has like their own, their own, um, you know, style of teaching mm -hmm. and the, their own style of conducting the class, and mm -hmm. it, it, it ref, it ref, you know reflects their own different backgrounds. Yeah. So I think in our energy class, yeah. there's like a flipped classroom. So mm. half the class is us teaching or presenting, half the class is the teacher yeah. giving their whole lecture. Yeah. Um, Professor Dai's class, we had like a what was it, a, ne a negotiation simulation mm. last week. So it all depends on the lecturer. There's a lot of creativity involved, I think. Yeah, I think way. this kind of class can help us to get a common understanding mm -hmm. about the whole environment field. Yeah, since we are from different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's good. But yeah, like uh, <laughs> the, you know, uh, from in my undergrad, we would always just do like final exams or midterms. But like in PKU, for mm -hmm. example, there's like a, a variety of different assessment tools that the professors kind of adopt in their classes. You've got you know, presentations, discussions, homework, final papers as well. So it kind of really caters towards like a plethora of students, you know, like maybe like some individuals might not be so good on like, you know, a final exam cramming, for example, maybe they're a bit more aggressive in, in their essays. So it's a really nice, it, it's, it's great. You know, the PKU program is, is really good for that. Yeah, yeah. But how do you balance since we need to uh, write the mm. final <laughs> ess <laughs> essay? Yeah. Uh, well, um, I think it's entirely dependent on the individual, you know, your time <laughs> management. Um, it's not particularly stressful over the semester, but I've had periods of, you know, a couple of weeks where there's been like a couple courses, multiple assignments due around the same time. And I found myself, you know, holed up in like a cafe <laughs> in, in yeah, the I mean campus. Like any <laughs> university, if you're, you know, you're expected to have a certain level of um, time management and, you know, consistent work on different projects. And I think if you're you know, done an undergraduate degree anyway, there shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, yeah. It's just like any other university degree, I think. 
Um, I think one other I interesting point is that because our degree is unique in the sense we spend um, one year in PKU and then yeah. we spend one year in LSE. Yeah. And we're a very, fairly small batch. I mean, there's mm. only eight of us this yeah, year. Yeah, there's only eight. Um, <laughs> it's very small. But it's three of us internationals this year and five local Chinese students. Mm -hmm. But I think one really underrated point is that when we come as foreign students, as new international students, I think our strongest point of support has been the local students like mm. you and the other and the others and um i think because the second year is in lsc we can kind of repay that favor yeah, as well yeah, 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 we'll show you last year show us so please. it's almost yeah. like a ex mini exchange in the sense that we always have like a support like a support network of the local students um and you also have a, like a support network when you come to lsc so i think that program structure is yeah, it's really it's beneficial it's i think it's very nice yes yes so what's your plan about the future after <laughs> graduation? Oh. Ah, <laughs> that's, that's a tough one. Um, do you want to go first or should I go first? I think you have it more. Uh, well, <laughs> I I mean, well, I've already taken a gap year and this course is actually two years. So I think yeah. it's about high time I enter the job market. Um, whether or not this program actually helps in getting a job, I have absolutely no idea. One would hope so, um, because uh, obviously getting a master's is quite difficult, <coughs> especially passing one. Uh, but we'll see. I'm 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 looking to work after after doing the two year masters. I mean, I've done four years of undergrad plus this would be a two year masters. So then doing a PhD, maybe not at the moment. Mm. Um, but I I do think there's a big appeal. I mean, obviously, climate change is one of the most pressing um, challenges that our generation faces, and we do need a new group of students and individuals who are thinking about perhaps like solving many of these climate change and environmental challenges. So I do think it's good to have um, a group of students who has a skill set of studying in Asia as well as Europe mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah, studies yeah. both the scientific and social science dimensions of climate change. So I would hope that those skills and experiences are looked favorab favorably upon by employers, mm. or by international organizations alike. So um, let's see how it goes. Um, well, I mean, LSE and PKU have quite a lot of network opportunities that we can, you know, take advantage of. Into, definitely. So I, I think uh, in terms of if there are opportunities to kind of dip our toes into what potential occupations we can we can get after after this master's degree, yeah, th there's definitely those opportunities. We have like, the whole of Asia covered <laughs> in terms yeah. of alumni network, in terms of, um, you know, job opportunities mm -hmm. as well as Europe. And LSE also has a big alumni network in North yeah, America because they well. have department networking events, but they also like if you join like a <coughs> club or like uh, you know a club, they also have those individual networking events as well. So you can you can definitely take advantage of that. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. Maybe we will get an idea a um, few years later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. After studying. Yeah. Yeah. How are you? How, how do you find? Um, I haven't. PKU? I haven't decided <laughs> yet. Um, you mean how I find study in PKU? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. how did you find it? Because even even though you're from China, it's still a n it's all <coughs> it's still a new experience for you as well. I would presume. Yeah, yeah. I have finished my uh, undergraduate study also in Beijing, so I think uh, it is uh, very similar um, for me uh, than uh, for you guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are there any points that uh, do you think like the courses can be improved upon? Like, do you have any points in that regard? Um, yes, I think uh, we have um, too many lectures. <laughs> <and> too many <laughs> lectures. <laughs> yes, um, <coughs> it's good. It's good because it can give us the common understanding, mm -hmm. uh, just as I talked before. Because we are from different backgrounds, uh, some from economics mm -hmm. and also financial. Mm -hmm. And as for me, I'm from a science bachelor, mm -hmm. uh, environmental science. So. I think it is good because we need to know more about the environment. Um, but I hope that uh, it will be better if it can give us some teach, uh, teaching about the technology. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we know the problem and we know uh, how it appears, but mm -hmm. we need to solve it. Yeah. And yeah. we need to learn some materials and learn some measures to control the pollution, yeah. yes, to improve the environment. Mm -hmm. So yes, I think more, more focus uh, should be put in there. Yeah. Okay. I, I was just going to say, um, like, you know, a bit more maths uh, based uh, courses, you know, just from the fact that I'm more of a math centric individual. Um, maybe, you know, some 
uh, uh, quantitative methods courses, so yeah. like statistical software analysis, because then we can learn how to like assess environmental data and then maybe incorporate that into our thesis topics, for example. Yeah, no, definitely. I think, I think we have some more flexibility when it comes mm. to that in, in our thesis writing, but it yeah. would be helpful if we yeah, had definitely. that in the courses, yeah, right? Yeah. Because I'm more used to like <coughs> um, modeling financial data. I'm, I don't necessarily know how to use environmental data currently, but if I maybe had a course on that, um, I could just, you know, my thesis topic, at least this year, could be yeah. that. That's another thing as well, right? We have to do um, <coughs> two theses. Um, two dissertations. We have to do one at PKU and then <laughs> another mm. one at LSE. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. The w in terms of <coughs> workload, there is a quite a bit of workload. But I I do think that the thesis, especially at a master's level, is kind of what you can use to like apply for jobs mm. and differentiate mm. yourself from other candidates. <coughs> so I guess the fact that you have two thesis topics. It's a good conversation point to have. Yeah, like and it's in like an interviews. opportunity, right? Yeah, yeah, you yeah, have exactly. like two you chances to kind of really do a topic that can... Yeah, because you like extensively researched in it, like they yeah. could ask you like really intricate questions and you can just answer I'll back answer to them. them yeah. And you'll be like really, yeah. really like interested and you'll actually be quite happy and then you know, they might enjoy it. And I think these two thesis will be a little different. Uh, as for the first one, we need to write in PKU. I think it is more focused on how our background can connect with the environment problems. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the second one, I think it is mainly focused on environmental economics. Yeah. Yeah. So it is a little different, and we can also figure out uh, our interests. Yeah, in yeah, this, yeah, we can like yeah. experiment, you know, this this year, and then when we finalize our interests, when we go to LSC, we can we can explore our alternatives maybe, or we can maybe specialize further. Who knows? Yeah. But I think looking back, um, if the if the if the choice is between doing one year at LSC or one year here and one year at LSC, I I would highly oh yeah, yeah. recommend yeah, yeah, coming yeah, here. Take I the two <laughs> years. Take, two <laughs> years. take the two years. <coughs> yeah. You have some more time to think about what parts of climate change you would perhaps want to focus on yeah. specifically. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, the experience of studying in China is such a unique experience. Um, coming from India originally, having spent time in the UK, the opportunity to spend time with uh, Chinese people yeah, yeah, in a yeah. Chinese environment, taking Chinese classes is very special, I think. Mm. And um, we'll definitely have skill sets that go beyond just what you see on paper. Yeah, yeah, in so terms of skill sets, you know, it's always great to be open-minded and definitely. putting yourself, you know, in an unfamiliar environment like China and then having to adapt to it, it's, it's great for personal growth. Yeah, definitely. And also if you want to like, you know, you know, be a bit better in terms of Mandarin proficiency, you know, being yeah. in an interactive environment where you're forced to use Mandarin, it's, 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 it's amazing. It's a once in a lifetime <laughs> opportunity. Yeah. It's, it's a bit hard. Yeah, it it's hard. of course for it's us hard. it's hard, <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> but like it's it, it's definitely really useful to but just have very good, yeah. You know, a lot of people useful. to try practice on. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Also, you can get to master's degree yeah, in yeah, the top to, university. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you get two master's yeah, degrees. It's worth I mean, it. yeah. and the the really interesting thing is that we were told after coming here. Um, apparently, to get a master's degree here, it takes three years. Mm. So by doing a dual degree option, you're kind of getting. Yeah. Um, you're kind of getting. Yeah, yeah it's like a trade-off. Like you know, you're like compacting all the all the courses into one year, but at the end of it, you get two, you know, master's degrees out of it. You get two master's degrees from top institutions in I think Europe I think and Asia. I think PKU got a uh, was recently nominated for the best. Asian University. Oh yeah, QS, yeah, right? Yeah, the QS rankings. Second, second year in a row. Is that, was it second year in a row? Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, second okay, year okay. in a row. So, there you go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, double master's degree, prestigious universities all around, you yeah. know, great name value, great networking opportunities. It's, 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 a, it's a done deal. Yeah, so where you recommend it to your friends? <laughs> so actually, f funnily enough, like some, some people, um, some of my friends, like I went on exchange with in, you know, Singapore, for example, they are asking they <laughs> asking me to have a call and um, because they're interested in this program. So there is a lot of friends. interest. So <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I would definitely recommend this program. Yeah. I might just <coughs> send this recording to him instead of just calling him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah really hope that Use more students can come to join us. Yeah. Thank you for listening. I hope uh, you will find it useful. We hope you uh, to see you guys on campus. I mean, if you have any questions, please feel free to check out the website. Um, you should find all the information there. Uh, if not, you can always reach out to the emails on the link and we'd be happy to provide answers. Yeah.
Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.